That's the only thing that ever came across my radar. Ever. So when it comes to Baltimore, honestly, to be to be respectful, um, you got somebody called Raw's Dope, Raw Dope Podcast. And the only only reason I would give them a um I never even heard of them. Raw Dope, yeah. So only the only way I would give and I'm a we got recording? I'm a, I'm gonna give you all this. Hey, I'm gonna give you all this. Hey, since you need, since this, I'm a, you need since, this more than me. Since I'm, I'm asking questions, cocky. I'm gonna give you all, I'm gonna give you all this. I'm giving you all this on camera. Hey, I never quit. I'm a little more cocky. He I, might I, I never did this on camera. Me. No, I'm not. I'm not, bro. I'm good. I'm a, listen, I'm good. Yeah. My shit speak for itself. Yeah, I see. Period. So we're gonna go we'll top three, right? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Raw Dope Podcast <laughs> the edge over Real Spill because they do video consistently. I don't think you could be a top podcaster in this game if you don't do video consistently. Right. So Real Spill. I don't think they probably would be three. Nah, they probably would. They probably wouldn't be in my top three. They probably wouldn't be in my top three. Honestly, they wouldn't be in your top. I don't three. think so. They don't do video consistently enough. Okay. Video like this shit is not easy. Man, no, I, listen. You know better than me. This is what you do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's well, why I'm I say. But that's why I say I'm gonna give you this. Yeah. I'm gonna give yeah. you this. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You gotta have all this. So. Yeah. Um, respectfully, they won't be in my top three because they don't do video consistent enough. Yeah, okay. And and being technical, I don't think Baltimore Baltimore does video enough for me in general. So when you ask me about podcasts, respectfully, yeah. I think about DTLR. Okay. Shoe City. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think I'm number one over DTLR. Right. So I'm not thinking about real spill respectfully. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not thinking about raw dope. Respectfully, because like I don't think they putting in the work I'm putting in, and that don't got nothing like that's yeah. that just is what it is. You feel me? Yeah. I'm gonna just I'm gonna always say that. Nobody yeah. never asked me that question, so like, yeah. and don't ever think I'm scared to answer the question. You know what I'm saying? But I always want to show niggas love. So like, if you yeah. ask me a question, I know how I feel, and I'd rather say something positive before I say something negative. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even saying you the best don't mean you gotta say something negative. Yeah. You don't have to. I can think I'm the best, and at the same time say, yo, but he nice. He nice. They ain't fucking with me, but he nice. Yeah, like, what's is that disrespectful? No, it's not. It's not. Like, I guess. I guess. With I don't me, think that's disrespectful. When I guess, because I'm an interviewer, when you ask a question, I feel like it's a. It's, I would hope that it comes with some type yeah. of explanation. Yeah. And with my explanation, you're gonna know why exactly I think. Yeah, it, it definitely got to come with explanation. Yeah. Too, so though. like that's why. And, so as competitors, my whole thing is like, to make it in this world, at any field, or anything you do, right? Mm -hmm. To make it to the top, you gotta be a competitor. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure anybody that's doing anything, I, I'm pretty sure Prince felt like Michael Jackson couldn't fuck with him. Pretty sure of that. But Not that, saying that he didn't think Michael Jackson I'm was with that you. guy, but if you ask him straight up, who better you or Michael? Prince gonna say I'm, me. I'm with you. Will. Michael Jackson gonna say me. No, I'm with you, but that's, and that's why I say I don't like having them conversations because. When you ask those questions, yeah, I'm Prince, saying you didn't Prince, have it. Prince. You wasn't having the conversation just out of nowhere. No, you like, fine. I ask you. No, you fine. I'm just saying, let me, let me, let me yeah. say my piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand, but when you say Prince and Michael Jackson, I feel like that can be a comparison across the world. Yeah. Respectfully, I don't think I can be compared to nobody in Baltimore, and 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 I think me saying that some people could take that wrong. That's why I say yeah. it caught me off guard. Like yeah. if you ask me about podcasts, I'm thinking, okay, I think my podcast is better than um the. What's the niggas on the Lobby Boys? Is 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 uh, Jim Jones and um, Mayno? I right, think my right. shit way better than Mayno's. Yeah, I can say that, but I would never say mine is way better than Raw Dope Podcast or Real Spill because it's not fair. I don't think right. they get a. They, that's not a fair shake. That's not yeah. fair to say. So it's that's not why, fair to them or you. To them. But that's why I say I don't want to answer because I'm being, I'm being, yeah. y'all wanted me to answer the question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm being real. Yeah. Bro, we feel me, sir. Listen, this, like, how, you say, this how we like, talk, listen, this is how we talk here. That's why we no, all you, laugh. Ain't, this ain't how we talk here. That's like you saying, that's like you trying to compare Prince to fucking, I don't know. The only people you can compare him to is Michael Jackson, Elvis, like, that's the only people. So when you, I get what you're saying, You get what you're saying? You saying don't even really compare you unless. They of that level of you. You I, saying that shit ain't even close, so don't even ask you. Yeah. I get what you're saying. That's now. what I'm saying. I knew I was gonna get it out. No, you I knew ain't I was gonna to get it out. I knew I was gonna get it. Right, now I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. But even like, honestly, yeah. since we since we started, fuck it. 
What's poppin', everybody? Mr. J here. We having a great conversation with Will Barton, Baltimore fucking legend. Let's get this shit started. That's like me asking, asking you a question of like you versus Josh Shelby. I think that's closer, even if you say you better, that's a yeah. closer comparison yeah. than he was in the league. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He yeah. might not have got dropped, but he was in the league, he was there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even like hypothetically, Omar. Omar probably he ain't go to the league, but he was a he's a legend. He got, yeah. in the city, he got yeah. a name behind him. Yeah. I'm not. That's just my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, bro. Like, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, like, when you act, I think of, like, niggas like Mano, his shit's still coming up. You know what I'm saying? I think of people like Carisha. Her shit is fire. She just has some yeah. shit with, with Diddy. I ain't, Diddy, I say that. I yeah. ain't getting no interview with Diddy, but at the same time, I'm doing this dolo. She got the rope behind her. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's I mean, I everybody's at. starting their world. I feel like in your world right now, you in Baltimore, you based in Baltimore. In my what's world, a bigger, what's a bigger, what's a bigger interview than this? And it ain't gonna be too many. In my world, and I think I'm biased, bro. In my world, nobody fucking with me. In my world, except for Joe Button, I am athlete, Pivot Podcast. Yeah. I say these because Joe Rogan, um, uh. The Full Send Podcast. It's some more, but I say that because these niggas aren't backed by no company. Right. You know what I'm saying? Brandon Marshall put millions of dollars into his shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you a podcast that's backed by a company, you ain't fuck with me because, bro, you got you got a company behind right. you. Right. That's, that's just what yeah. I say, but I, I might be biased, but whatever. How you feeling, dog? I feel real good. Hey, man, you look good. Yeah. That's Damn, one thing dog. we're going to do, baby. We're going to look good. Yo, it's so much to talk about. Yeah. From Baltimore, you're a vet in the league. So you you a starter for the Nuggets. Y'all went to the playoffs. Shit, I mean, what other team would you rather lose to, if any, but the niggas that won it all? I mean. I mean, I don't like losing, so I'd rather not lose to anybody. But like you said, I mean, if you're going to lose, say you lost to the champs. You got to, I mean, you just got to pay, pay homage, tip your hat to that. Do you think um, Steph being one and four now? You think he? Uh, what was the argument? People saying like he he top five. You think he the contender of like one of the one of the greats now or? Gotta be. If you look at his, you gotta look at the body of work. What he what he've accomplished since he's been in the league. Multiple All Star, first team All NBA's, back to back regular season MVP. One of them unanimous. Only other player to do that is Mike. He got now with the win a couple days ago, what, four championships. And now he got the finals MVP. That was the only thing that was kind of missing on his resume. The most wins in the regular season. I mean, you got to put him up there. I mean, how, how, if, if I'm him, if I'm arguing for myself and I'm him, I'm saying, how could you not? Facts. Playing against him, was he was it really like that, or because you a competitor is like he's just good like anybody? Else. I mean, when I'm when I'm competing with somebody, I try to stay, I try to stay in the mindset as just any other player. Mm. I gotta go out there and compete hard, do what I gotta do, and I'm gonna be fine. But watching it as just a fan of the game, Steph one and one is is, is no question. Mm. When I'm on a court with him, I never would think that way though, because that's just. You know, that goes into me being competitive and wanting to win a game. But just watching the game, sitting back and watching, I mean, you, I mean, and knowing the game as well as I do, you know he's special. Is there anybody that you ever st- took a step back on the court and like, damn? On the court? Yeah. Like, while like playing? Ever? Yeah. Never. Never? I could never Not do that. Not even Kobe? And Kobe, my favorite player all the time. But when I'm in between the lines, I can't do that because I'm trying to win a game. And I'm trying to perform at that level. You get what I'm saying? Right, yeah, so yeah. I can't. You get, if you get in a game and you get caught up in that moment, more than likely you're going to get killed because those guys are killers. They can mm. sense shit like that. They can sense fear. They can, they can sense you admiring them, and they're going to go out and kill you. So during the game, when I'm in between them lines, I'm not even thinking that way. I'm just thinking this is another guy that I got to go out there and kill. It's crazy because, like, um, hearing you say that, and then, like, I guess you spoke about the first time you ever faced Kobe him guarding you from like the fucking free yeah. throw line, you like the fuck, mm-hmm. like that shit fucks you up. But now, you you own the record for threes at Denver, right? Yeah. 
Like that's that's a hell of a turnaround. Yeah, franchise leader. Uh, but that's a good story, like you said. Um, when I played against Kobe, that was the first time somebody got at me like that. All the way at the free throw line, because I always been elite. So to have somebody guard you, like it kind of threw me. I was like, damn, he ain't even got me. Like that's never happened before. Like, nice. and I didn't even want to shoot the ball. I didn't have no confidence. It fucked my head up. So after the game, I was so fucked up about it. I just was like, yo. This will never happen again. Like, nobody will ever guard me at the free throw line when I'm at the three-point line. Like, basically damn me to shoot. That'll never happen again. So I was just like, yo, I got to get in the gym, work on my jump. I got to get this down pat where they respecting the shit where you got to guard me. And like you said, now that I'll come for a circle, I worked so hard on my three-point jumper to be able to be, you know, number one of a franchise coming from where I come from and not really being labeled a shooter, it just lets you know the work you, you put in. So, of course, I don't, this is a disclaimer. <clears throat> I'm not like the biggest basketball fan or especially like, I don't know too much about basketball. I know from experience, I mean, from research and shit like that. But I see your turnaround. Like, we can clearly see it. You're yeah. the franchise leader in threes yeah. at Denver. When you first started, niggas is guarding you from the, the free throw line. Yeah. We see niggas like, I don't know, Nick, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. We see niggas like Westbrook. Niggas always been talking about yeah. his, his jumper for the longest. Yeah. And he always talking about he's working on it. But that shit ain't never go nowhere. Like, <laughs> what are you doing different than these other niggas? Like, I mean, I can't speak for him because I don't know what he's doing or what his <laughs> process is. No, I'm serious because I fuck with Westbrook. He's one of the best players. But for me, I can just speak for what I'm doing. I'm just putting in the work and trusting the work. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm putting in so many reps where I already know once I get out there for the game, it ain't nothing because I've been working on this shit for so long. Damn, you said something that was, that was interesting. You said, trust the work. Yeah. How do you learn how to do that in the pros or any aspect of life or work, whatever? How do you learn how to trust the work that you put in? It's like taking a test in school. If you study for it, and you know you study for it, you put in countless hours of just studying this, you know what's going on, you know the type of questions going to be on this test. And you studying for it, studying for it, night in, night out, day in, day in, hours on hours on hours on hours. When you get to the test, that's, that's the easy part. You're going to be like, as soon as you get to the question, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, hey, I just studied this, I know this. Mm. Even if you don't know the exact answer, you're going to have an idea of it. You right. get what I'm saying? So it's right. like, that's how I treat the court. It's like, I'm shooting so much that I know once I get out there on the game, like, yeah, I'm hitting this shit. Yeah, I remember when I was playing um, college ball, like, coming from Baltimore, we ain't really have the best resources, right? And I'll never forget my, my freshman year in college, my coach said, you got to learn how to slow the game down. I ain't understand what the fuck he was talking about until I became, like, a junior in college and I'm playing ball and it came easier. Did you have to slow the, the game down when you got to the pros? Yeah. And how did you learn how to... That's crazy you just said that. I was just talking to somebody about that earlier. It was like, I remember going into my rookie year, so when I got drafted, it was just like, even in summer league and playing pickup ball in Portland, because that's where I got drafted, playing with the, with the older guys and stuff like that, I was just like, damn, like, gaps is closing and closing more quick. The speed of the game is way more fast. Guys way more athletic. So shit I was used to getting away with in college, I had to make an adjustment. It was like, damn, I'm like, I'm questioning myself, like, damn, what I got slower or something? Like, it's just that guys are that much better, mm. they that much smarter, they they that more athletic, bigger. Like it's just it's just a different different game. And you got you gotta make adjustments to it. Is it that though, or cause that I know that's true for sure, but I felt like in my opinion, just being honest. I felt like the talent was always there, right? But because I didn't, like, again, we didn't have a lot of a big structure coming from the city, playing football, playing sports in general. I can't speak for league or whatever, but from my high school or whatever, I didn't know, I didn't know how to read fucking plays on defense. I didn't yeah. even know they did plays on defense. Yeah. I didn't know, like, covers and shit like that. I didn't know none of that. So I remember at times it was like I was so busy trying to make the play, I was fucking myself up. Right. Did you ever feel like that in the pros or no? It wasn't that. A little bit, a little bit. So when I got to the league, definitely, like, the terminology is a little more different. Mm. And like I said, guys, are, it, it, it's just another level. So guys are so much more better 
You get what I'm saying? Like, you got to start learning the nuances of the game. Right, okay. The nuance, that's a great word. Yeah, yeah. you got to start thinking the game more than just playing it. Exactly. That's what I learned. Because exactly. growing up, anybody would tell you that, no, I was a street baller. Like, yeah. that's how I grew up playing basketball, like, on the streets. I never had a trainer. I never worked out. I never had a workout until I got to college and shit like that in, 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 in the pros. I never had a trainer or nothing like that. So I was just hooping, going off, like, I'm just nicer than you, just naturally. So when I got to the league, it was like a whole, it was like a whole new world because everybody nice. Everybody nice. Facts. I was just telling you, man, it's crazy. We, like, as consumers, we watch the game and we be like, man, that nigga a bum. Like, boy, you crazy. Even a nigga coming off the bench is nice. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. so hard to Listen, play. It's, it's motherfuckers that don't get no time that'll really fuck you up. Yeah. Like, the average basketball player, he will fuck you up for real. Like, because the good thing about me going to the league is that I've been in every role, right? So high school, college, AAU, I've always been dominant, right? Mm -hmm. I've always been that guy, mm -hmm. every level. I got to the league, in my first three years, I was on the bench, like, <laughs> not getting no time. So it gave me a whole new perspective of basketball. Mind you, now look at where I'm at now, though. But what I'm saying is, you wouldn't even think Back then, I was one of those guys. I was like the 12th man on the team. I will cook you. <laughs> but you looking at it like, if you're not around me, if you don't really know me, like, you feel what I'm saying? And you ain't never hooping around me. Like, the average fan just watching the game probably think, yo, sorry for real. Mm -hmm. And that's how I used to think. When I first came to the league, I'm like, yeah. I remember going to my rookie. I'm like, oh, I'm about to take his spot. I'm about to take his spot. He don't play? Oh, yeah, he can't fuck with me. He must be sorry. The whole when time, that nigga there, nice. The last man on the bench, my first day was fucking cooking me. I'm like, oh, yeah. I got to get better. Bro, You, it's like, fuck. I'm, like, if you look at my notes, I swear to God, right? That was a part of my notes, and I ain't even want to start this shit off oh, talking you got to do an interview with me. It's just going to flow. Yeah, nah, nah. So it's, it's just funny, because like, I didn't even want to start here, but fuck it. We over here. So the transitions that you went through, right? I Dude. wanted to ask you this. In high school, you was that guy. In college, you was that guy. You come to in and, AAU, I was that guy. Yeah, in AAU, you was, in that, rec you was that guy. Ball, I was that guy. You come to the league, right? You come off the bench, so you barely even touching the floor. Then you probably top what top five, uh, six players. Yeah. And then you starting. Yeah. So many different trans transitions. Tell me, how was you even able to handle those transitions through the time? Because like you come, shit. You come to the league from being that guy's like, man, I'm supposed to start, and then you only get no playing time at all. How like, how did you handle that? I mean, at first it was tough. It was tough at first because I was so young, and I was so used to playing and being a man. It like, it was like an ego check. If, if we've been honest, man. it just, it just fucked with your ego because you're so used to being that guy. Your family used to being that guy. You being that guy. I mean, anything you think about women, mm -hmm. like, yeah, man, yeah. I ain't playing the girls looking. You feel what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. everything, anything you want to think about is the ego check. Because now I'm at the end of the bench, and I'm not getting in unless we up 30 or down 30. Damn. So at first, I remember I being there, I'm like, I'm down there. I'm just kind of like, this is some bullshit. woo de woo like. But then I had vets on the team. That would just bring me along, like, nah, shorty, this how you supposed to carry. Before you move forward, right? Yeah. Before you tell me the, the transition part, right? As a human, we just talking about this outside, because we still human at the day. How does that affect your game when your mind ain't in it? It's like, bro, I don't, you put me in when we down 30, we up 30, I don't wanna, like, that's the, fuck? the biggest part. If you ain't got it mentally, it don't matter how much talent you got, it's over with. Damn. It's over with. Like I said, because when you get to that level, yo, everybody was that guy in high school. Everybody was that guy in college. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you playing against, really, the elite. Everybody, you got to think about it. Everybody was you. Everybody is you. Mm. So if you don't have no, no, no mental strength, you're going to be out there on some bullshit because you can't cruise through the game. Facts. It's only a certain few that, that's that talent, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Kobe, Michael Jordan. It's only, but it's only few of them, even in the NBA at that level, where they can say, "I might can give up half effort and cruise and still be good." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is kind of, you feel what I'm saying? That same little, for that, spot. that same little boat. You feel what I'm saying? Like he might be a little more talented than me. I might be a little more talented than him. But we in that same mix. 
The only way to get out that mix is the mentality. And how does you? Because, like, again, you wasn't in that mix originally. Like, when you yeah. were in high school, you one of them. Yeah, yeah. You ain't right. the niggas in the mix. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm one of them. I could cruise if I want to and still give you at right. least 25. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now you get to the, the league and you in a mix of, like, you got them and then you got me. Yeah. How did you mentally get through that? You saying the pros or something? You saying the pros came yeah, to I had some vets. Like when vets. I was, used to be fucked up in the head about it, I had some vets to pull me to the side like, yo, listen, you talented, right? Mm -hmm. You talented. You going to be good. You just got to learn this other shit. You feel what I'm saying? You got to learn how to be a professional. You got to learn to wait your turn. That's the thing about the lead, too. Sometimes you got to wait your turn. Mm. It might not be your turn. And when they was telling me that, that was the biggest thing, though. Them telling me all that, but telling me I was nice and telling me that I had talent, that was the thing that said, you know what, I'm going to listen to them because I was only 21 coming into the league. So I'm looking at them like I knew most of them like from watching them. like So I had respect for them. I'm like, damn, Mo Williams, Jared Jeffries, Darrell Wright, um, Earl Watson. Like I'm like, damn, these guys I looked up to coming to the league that I thought was nice. So them telling me that I was nice, I was like, damn, I must be doing something right. You feel what I'm saying? I can't be a bum because these guys that I think is cold is telling me I'm cold. So it was like, okay, all right, now, they saying that I do got the time. Let me listen to them on the mental aspect, be a professional, cheer for my teammates, don't be no hater. You feel what I'm saying? And keep putting the work in. Because if you're a good dude mentally, you're a good teammate, your time eventually going to come. Now, when that time come out, you're going to be ready. Like, certain guys, they time came, but they weren't ready because they was being a dickhead, wasn't listening, got caught up in some shit, stopped working on their game. Because when your time come, though, it's just, it's just fast. Mm -hmm. You're ready or you're not. Facts. Yo, it's crazy because um, that made me think of the different coaching styles, right? And <laughs> shout out to my lady for this one. Like, as men, we always, like, get at, that tough love, because that's all we know, right? But it don't work for everybody. And one thing you, you said was, like, they, told, they, they, they gave you some, some type of affirmation. Even when you said after you played uh, Kobe, he was like, yo, just work on your jumper. Yeah. It wasn't like he was like, yo, a bummy, like, bro, just yeah. work on your jumper. Like, that gave you some type of motivation. Talk about the different coaching styles coming up and how that affects players, because I, who was, it was some, and you can tell me, anybody, it was the nigga name, he was, he was nice as shit. In college, he came. I think Jordan drafted him, and he ain't. He, he played. He, I don't know if Jordan drafted him. Kwame Brown. Brown. Yeah, Jordan drafted him. Yeah. But he he ain't really get the uh, the bump he deserved, the shine. He wasn't that good in, in the league or whatever. Yeah. But he was saying like the the coaching style was just different. Talk to me about how important is that coaching style? If if do you think you'd be the same player that you are now if niggas wouldn't give you that affirmation like yo you nice bro? As far as the coaches, what I tell them is like. If you ain't the star of the team, the coach only going to go so far for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he got to worry about the superstar. But you wasn't team. a star, but you That's still got. That's what I'm got... trying to say. But the coach, you asked me about coach. You find, you saying coach as far as the coach or coaching coaching style? Is... Just coaching styles. Like how did that? How, I, how the does coaching affect... styles never affected me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Like because once I seen, once I got to that level, it's like yo, the coach got to worry about the main guys, right? Mm -hmm. The main guy's superstar. He got to make sure he good. He ain't got time to worry about if the tenth man, the twelfth man, if 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 they and they feelings or not or nothing like that. You get what I'm saying? So once I realized that, it's a good point you made. Most guys get to lead and they can't be good because they so used to having the coach on their side. They so used to the coach saying, "You my guy, you my guy." That give you confidence when you know the coach. You know what I mean? Coach feeling you ain't gonna let you do what you want. You ain't gonna get subbed or nothing like that. You ain't gotta, you know, you ain't gotta leash on, you ain't gotta look over your back. What made me good is I ain't need no coach to tell me I was nice. I ain't need no coach to say, yo, you my guy. I had already made a decision in my head. I'm putting in this work, I'm working hard. When I get on the court, I'm gonna play my game. I already know I'm nice. So I'm not going out there being hesitant. Mm. I, always, I almost got the mindset, it is what it is. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's the difference in being successful in the league as a role player. You get what I'm saying? Like, some guys, they can't thrive under not knowing that... Everything coach, revolves around them. Yeah. yeah. If, they, if it don't revolve around them, they ain't good. Me, I'm going to figure it out regardless. Like, the stars on my team, Nicole Leo, is Jamal Murray. And I respect that. Yo, this y'all team. 
But I'm going to still go out there and be aggressive and be me while letting y'all still do y'all. Mm. There's other guys that can't do that. You feel what I'm saying? They, they fold. They don't go out there and play with the same confidence. That's why you hear certain guys like, oh, man, coach, coach won't let me do this. The coach won't let me do it. I need a coach to let me do this. Woo, woo. No, that's, to me, that's some coward shit. Do you think, I mean, just as a fan, do you think that's, um, and just give me your honest opinion, do you think that's where the Lakers failed, I guess? Because they had so many stars, everybody couldn't be a star. Somebody had, they had to. I think the Lakers failed because, one, they wasn't healthy. Oh, uh, yeah, let's okay. just keep it real. AD was in and out of the lineup. LeBron missed some time. And they was a new team. Westbrook came there. So if the stars are in and out of the rotation and you have a new team, you don't have no chemistry. So it's going to be hard to win. Then they didn't play defense. You don't play no defense in the NBA and you don't got no chemistry. You're going to be a losing team. Mm. It's just simple as that. All right, I want to reset because we talking about sports and shit. I ain't mean to start off like that, bro. You got you from Baltimore, bro. Like, and like, you got your story is is real, and I don't think a lot of people know that yeah. for real. Like, um, and I was curious, you know, when you go through things, it's some things that get you through it. And I was wondering, like, what the, what got you through? Was it music? Like, what, what what was it that helped you get through that? And I'm gonna touch on it, but I'm just curious. Like, did, was it any? Was it anything music specifically that got you to help you get through? Like, did you listen to any anybody? Like, what type of music do you like? I mean, shit, rap, of course. I mean, I like all kinds of music. Right now, who I listen to the most? Or even when you was coming up? When I was coming up, Lil Wayne, he was my favorite rapper growing up. Now mm -hmm. I listen to Future. I asked that because I was listening to some music. I was like, I don't know, I was just, I was studying, I was, Preparing for the interview, I'm like, like I'm about to do a game and shit. Yeah. I'm listening to Drake. You like Drake at all? Yeah, hell yeah. So, this is my first time ever doing this, bro. So, I'm listening to Drake, and I'm like, damn, this is the interview right here. And I wanted to ask you, so I was listening, I was listening to um, 7 a.m. On, on, on Broad Path, right? Yeah. And it was, a, it was a few things that he said, and I'm like, bro, this sounds like a nigga that came through some shit. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I'm going to ask somebody. I'm going to say the quotes, and I want to get your opinion on it. Yeah. So he said, it's a mass shortage of niggas who owe me kudos. Do you feel like that in a league, in like college, coming from your city? Is a, is a lot of niggas that owe you kudos that just don't give you your kudos? In a way, yeah, sometimes. But that's just the... That's just the cocky side of me. That's the arrogant side of me. That's the side that also know I put in so much work, like how you not going to respect it. Mm. But I do get a lot of respect, though. But, you know, you uh, it's, it's, when you putting in so much work, it's never enough. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm so in tune with that. Mm. And the older I get, I get more in tune with my emotions, my feelings, why I feel this way. You mm. know what I'm saying? I put in so much work. I did so much. And it wasn't expected besides from me that like, how you not going to tilt your hat when you see me? How you not going to respect it? How you not going to praise me? How y'all praise these other motherfuckers? Like, I'm the one. I'm the one from your city. I'm the one that, that was really going to the schools you went to, living in the neighborhood at the same parties y'all was in. Like, I was really a regular nigga. I'm doing the same shit they doing. It's not like I was put up somewhere. So you really supposed to respect it when you see somebody like me really getting it. You said you were going to keep it real. You said that's, that's just you, right? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. Who, who was the, because I, I, I wouldn't know. I, I wasn't, like, that tuned into basketball. I'm just being transparent and honest. Who, who, who are some of the niggas from the city that you feel like people was respecting or, or was getting, you was getting overlooked by? Uh, it depends what time period. Like, I mean, it was a lot of hoopers that the city fucked with. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like who? It would be hard. What I'm saying, it would be hard, like, to just put one name on it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it would be hard to just put one name on it because it was a lot of hoopers at the time when I was when I was coming out. So I'd be all day naming niggas. Like, but for me, all I could do is speak on me, it was like, I wanted it so bad. It's like, I'm the one, can't you see it? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's just how you, that's just how I feel when you talented and you work, it's like, yo, 
I'm the one. Like, I know these other guys nice, too. Don't get me wrong. Show love to them, too. But, like, yo, I'm the one. Like, get that in your fucking head. That's, but, but that's, <laughs> nah, just, but that's just me as a person, though. So let me ask you this question. I might be dragging it, but I don't know, so I'm good. They say ignorance is bliss, so fuck it. I'm going to ask you this question first. Do you think it's better to be consistent over time or be really great for a certain amount of time? I'm going to always go with consistent over time. But it also depends what level you're at, too. When Talk I, to me. When, when, say level. when I say level, like, if you're at the top level what you're doing and you was only great over an amount of time, that means something. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But if yeah. you great in high school, or great in high school, or great in college, and we talking about that lead shit, then you can keep that great over time shit. I'd rather be consistent over time in the lead. So when I think about it, <laughs> when I think about it, I think of only person from the city, so we talking Baltimore now, only person from the city that I can say is that did more than you sports wise in my yeah. time is Melo. But even Melo, he had like a great run, yeah. and then he was out yeah. for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it comes to sports, I would arguably say you in my time probably were one or two debatably. Oh, it's not even up for debate, especially if we talking basketball. If we just no, talking, talking about in general. I mean, even sports in general. If we t because I, it might be some other that's on the outskirts of the city that we might not know, but if we talking about just strictly from the city. Yeah, strictly from the city. Man, listen, of our era. Of our era. Mellow. I'm sports period. Mellow on question number one. You feel what I'm saying? Mellow. Rudy. And me. Like who else, I'm saying, who else could it be? Tavon had a great run. I mean, I'm saying sports. I'm saying, as you talk sports in general, Tavon. But I, but that's why I say, that's why yeah. I say it's hard to say, it's hard to say that because that's taking a great step. But personally, I think if it if it came out, to, I feel like it would be mellow than you. I would say mellow Rudy and me. You would say mellow Rudy than you? Yeah, that's the top three. Okay. Mellow number one, obviously. That, I mean, that's not even close. And then Rudy and me, because Rudy had some years in the league where he was averaging damn near twenty. He had multiple years of that, so you gotta respect that. I think I think Rudy made an Olympic team, if I'm not sure. Can we look it up? I, yeah, oh, I think yeah. Rudy did the Olympics, so that's crazy. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? And then it's me with my longevity. Who, who would you say next? As far as sports or basketball? Sports in general. I would have to say Tavon. Tavon? Like you said, that's the only other person I can even think of. Like when you say from the city. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. No, of course. Yeah. All right, so mind you, I'm listening to this. I'm listening to this song. It's I'm like, damn, this is. And the next thing I heard was, "Heart is on my sleeve, but my body is in the Hall of Fame." <laughs> I'm like, damn. Mm. Do you feel like sometimes, like you said, bro, I came from nothing, bro. Like, I'm the goat, brother. You agree with it or not? Mm. You feel me, like? And I can speak it. My heart is on my sleeve, but bro, mm. like. I'm really in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. You feel like that? That's a Hall of Fame in what? And where? You respect the sport, basketball. I'm saying the NBA Hall of Fame, like the Hall of Fame of basketball. And just when you hear that statement, what, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Heart is on my sleeve, my body is in the Hall of Fame. When, when you hear that statement, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The first thing that comes to mind for me is just somebody that's really putting in that work and delivering. Do you at feel a like you level. him? Yeah, for sure. Where we come from, for sure. It ain't even a, it ain't even a, a question. <laughs> like it ain't even up for debate. Coming from the same nigga that asked me who. Yeah, like <laughs> who really? If we talking like from the city. In like, general, though. Yeah. Like, say in I general. mean, that's how I feel. Period. That's how, like you said, I wake up and feel that way. Like who really putting in the work every day, every summer, every year, being consistent. Doing what they doing at a high level, at the highest level. Mm. I'm one in ones. So I want to transition. It was two songs I was listening to. It was that, and it was the Remorse, right? Um, from Office, not his latest album. Do you like the latest project? Have you listened to it yet? The one, um, respectfully. What? Res uh, oh, uh, 
No, no. Never mind, respectfully, never mind. Some no, shit. no. <laughs> he said, never mind, respectfully. It's, um, what Honest, is it? Honestly, never honestly, mind. Honestly, never mind. You like that shit? Yeah, yeah. I ain't listened to it yet. I fuck with it. You fuck with it? Yeah. At so first, I, I did. The first listen, I was like, I don't know. But the last two days, I fuck with it. I feel like you live in Miami. First of all, I wish they could see this crazy spot. Yeah. I ain't listened to it yet, but yeah. from what I'm hearing, it sounds like some shit you would enjoy in Miami. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. If you live in, if you, you got to be living a certain type of life, feel what I'm saying? And you, you know what I mean? You like them girls. <laughs> talk you, like your the, shit. you like the girls. This nigga don't want to talk you like shit. the girls and shit like that. You going you gonna you gonna enjoy it. That ain't no little boy shit though. That's that's big boy, that's big boy shit right there. Just a vibe. So I'm gonna ask you this, right? We come from the city. I feel like and I talk to the, everybody from the city, I talk about this. I feel like the city got a a weird hold on niggas, bro. It's hard for us to dip. You think so? Yeah. Why do you I, think that? Because I just think we got a different look. I'm, your man's of 13 years here. Am I, am I lying? I feel like the city got a, a weird grasp on niggas. Like, niggas get lit and they just want to go back to the city. They just want to go back to Baltimore. They want to get that love in that city. Am, am I, am I, you think I'm lying? I feel, I feel like that's no, a, I, a, I'm a, just asking your opinion. A correct yeah, yeah. I feel, like, I, I feel like a lot of, and that's, and that's not just Baltimore, though. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah. We see, and, and respectfully so, you want to go back, get back to your hometown. We see Nipsey passing his hometown. We see Dolph passing his hometown. We see, what, Slim Duncan passing his hometown. We see Lil Snoop passing. Even, like, I feel like when we come from that city of nothing, yeah. and I was talking to your man from Memphis, like, I feel like it's, it's a lot. It's not just Baltimore. Yeah, you know it's me? everywhere. When you come from that city, when you come from nothing, you want to go back. I feel like it got a strong hold on niggas. Yeah, I go back all the time, though. I used to live there. You feel like? I used to go out. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, anybody in the city know that I'm out. Like, Larry Events, H. Franks. Yeah, like, he I'm wanted out. to make sure niggas well, I'm in the out. mix, though. <laughs> I'm in the mix, though. Like, so I'm not only coming home in the mix. So you don't think? But it's but from the outside, again, I, I, I don't follow you. That, we just met. Yeah. So I don't really know. It looked like I gotta get out of here, and I'm I'm gonna I'm get out of here so I can make sure I'm successful, my family's successful. That's what it looked like. No, I was already successful living there. Mm. I so, was in the lead making M's living in Baltimore. So, talk to me, cause I, I'm curious, I, and this is just for me to learn, cause I think about it. I feel like the niggas that that make it and they want to keep coming back, they fuck themselves over. That's from the outside. Well, I kept in. coming back. I never fucked myself. Damn, I ain't know that. You here with me right now, right? Yeah, I mean, but we in. No, I, I'm saying, I'm yeah. saying, I ain't never fucked myself over. Man, and I so was living how there. How often was you in the city? I was living there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Living. What do you consider and you was, living? And you was outside. And living outside, foreigners in the hood, Bentley trucks. So what do you think? What, what's what's the difference from a nigga that that go there and and, and fuck themselves up from you that was there and you? Look. It's the energy. Mm. What energy you giving off? When I come home, it's love. I'm showing love. I'm going there, I'm seeing my AAU kids that play on my AAU team. I'm giving back to the community. When, even when I'm outside, outside in clubs and parties and shit like that, I'm still showing love. I ain't thinking I'm better than nobody. I ain't trying to shit on nobody. It's love. I'm trying to have a good time. I'm trying to see some pretty girls. Back then, I, I'm, I got a girl now. I'm just telling you how it was when I was living there, what I was going. You feel what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to... I wasn't trying to do nothing disrespectful to nobody though. It's like it's the energy you give off. Like <sighs> what you if somebody do something to me, it's pure hate. Right, but it's it, pure hate. But that's but it's the name. I'm niggas I mean? to, what I'm what I'm trying to tell you is go ahead. if that's how I'm gonna go out, I'm willing to go out that way. If it's pure hate, oh my god. I, because I can't control that though. So this conversation is different because, because what, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is, why would you do why would you do some do something to somebody that ain't got his hands in them. I'm not in the streets. Because what niggas killing me for. We from the bro. You're not about to sit here and act like. No, you're not getting what I'm saying. I understand that happens. What I'm telling you is, I was always cool with that risk. If something like that happened, that means it's just meant to happen. If I, if I'm not in the streets, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm not in the streets, I'm not I'm not fucking nobody, wife or girl. If I'm not pressing down on niggas trying to act harder than what I am. What the fuck somebody gonna do something to me for? For getting buckets? No, because niggas just be hating. For getting money? And, and niggas just I'm be hating. That's what I'm saying. So that part of it, I was always cool with. 
When you moving how I'm moving, you doing the shit that I'm doing, you ain't got to be looking over your shoulder or worried about certain shit like that happening. Like I said, if somebody was to kill me, it was pure hate. I could never stop that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't stop that. No, for that sure. Don't ma- it don't matter where I'm where living at. For sure. I could be living in the nicest place in the world. If somebody's killing me because I got on a nice ring or I got on a nice watch, I could never stop that. No, that's I can fact. go out. I live in Miami right now. I can go outside my door right now. If that's the reason he's killing me, that's going to happen anywhere. That's a fact. That's I, why I was never scared in Baltimore because it's like, if somebody killing me over that, that's just, that mean that was just, it was meant to happen that way. I can't stop that. It's, 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 this, see, this conversation is different because you were living there, you moved, and f- by the grace of God, you were I was somebody... living there making money. Nah, it's that's not what like, I'm saying. I ain't talking about as a kid. No, that's, no, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said this conversation is different because you're not there every day now. You don't live there now, right? But I was. Nah, nah, that's what I'm saying. But I feel like we can't ignore the fact that it's so many other niggas that we see our greats. Like Nipsey Hussle was in the fucking, in LA, on, in his but, fucking but, community but what giving... what I'm saying is... That's what I'm saying. I love Nipsey. Nipsey. Rest in peace to that man. Y'all don't be knowing the whole stories of certain shit. They said that man called somebody a snitch. Mm. That's some street shit. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. I feel you. I feel I'm you. not outside getting in this man's business and, yo, you a snitch? Saying that to his face or telling that to somebody? That's what I'm saying. It's always more. Don't just be saying Nipsey got killed in his hood. Like he was just out there and they killed him. Tell a real story. Mm. You know, he caught the man a snitch. Whether he was or not, I don't know. I don't live there. That man took that personal and took that man's life. Mm. We're but, not going to act like he was just out there, hey, cooling. No, that was some street shit. But do you understand? But even, shit. Dog right got killed. That's some street no, shit? No, no, you're right. You're okay, right. then. You're right. But Dove, I mean, even Dove got killed. In, but you're right. He probably was in some street. Whatever. I, I ain't speaking on that. I don't know. But that's what we I'm all know the rumors but that's that, but that's what I'm saying. That's do you do you at least understand the the, the argument or the, the plight of a nigga being from the city not wanting his stars to be in the city? I understand that, but I always believe if you a star in the city, you gotta be in the city sometimes. I ain't saying I ain't even saying live there 24-7, but you gotta come show love. Yeah, for sure. You gotta motivate them young kids that's coming after you. I'm just talking about hanging in the in the neighborhood. You said you was outside. I, I hang, I hung. But what I'm saying is, what is somebody, what are you going to do to me? That's what I'm trying to say, for what? You're going to do something to me for what? What you going to say? Because he had a nice car? Nah, I'm I was not the nicer person. than that nigga. Fuck that nigga. He don't deserve nah, I ain't nobody doing niggas all be that hating, crazy bro. shit. No, but what, what I'm saying now is. Now I'm crazy. Like, no, no, no. What niggas I'm saying, don't be just you're not, listen, you're not getting my mindset of it, though. If that is why somebody going to do something to me, I'm cool with that. I've accepted And I'm that. saying as That's a nigga. Fine with so, me. And what I'm saying is, as a nigga who trying Why to. Why would get, I live with regrets? No, 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 no. Respect. Shot me because he said that nigga nice and shit. No, respect, me, respect, 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 respect. respect. But what I'm saying is, well, what I'm saying is, respectfully, respectfully, yeah. you being there, right? Yeah. From a nigga that's climbing that ladder, right? Right. The nigga that's seeing everything that's happening to the to our stars and shit and, and, and people that we care about. The niggas that care for you is like, and niggas can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm like, man. Nah, get out. Why? Go back, get back, but don't be in the hood, hang with your homeboys, get the fuck out. I'm That's saying what you say. Hang is to a certain degree, though. Like, you just said hanging. I was all son. Yeah, I was. That's a fact. And I'm you saying as a nigga that. that's looking, as a nigga that's your peer and looking at like... Well, listen, what? I ain't gonna lie to you, right? I remember. This was years ago. This when I was still living there. Some dudes, I'm not even gonna say their name. Some dudes called me and my brother. I'll never forget this. Me and my brother. And was like, yo... They got a phone call, and a nigga said, yo, we seeing that Bentley truck too many places in the hood, too many places outside. Like, something might happen in whoop de You know what me and my brother told him? Cool, good looking, but we still won't be outside. And, but nothing happened because what I'm telling you, yo, sometimes a motherfucker might say some shit like that just to scare you. Like, but why? Is, what I'm that's saying, not even what, worth it, though. But what I'm saying is, what's not worth it? What was we doing? We might hit a party from here there. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I like, feel you. I, what, why would I get? Why would I be afraid of that? Like I said, I don't got no bricks in my fucking car. No, I feel you. I'm not. I see, and, and I don't want me to uh, back and forth about that. I'm just saying, as a nigga that's. That see but it. I come from that area, so I'm never gonna be scared of that. No, That's what I'm trying you. to tell you. I, I come you. from For sure. that. I feel you. I f- if you want to beef with me over literally nothing because I made it, that's cool with me. And I understand what you're saying. 
you saying that that shouldn't be your attitude with some people. I'm saying that's my attitude. I accepted it. Respect. I can't. I mean, I can't. And you got that. a problem with me because I'm successful. Sometimes that's you. Fine with me. Sometimes you being you. That's fine with me. Sometimes you being you hurt a nigga feelings. Like you end up with the Bentley. Sometimes niggas take that. Niggas is weird. Niggas sometimes a nigga because he ain't got nothing. He take you coming to the club man, with that Bentley disrespectful. And what I'm trying to tell you is. I'm cool with that. Respect, respect. Because that makes no sense at all. Respect, respect. If you, respect, if you respect. mad because somebody pulled up and, and something or he got something. I've, I've been down before. i seen niggas pull up on me with more money than me, more jewelry than me. That never, that never, that never made me hate. No. That only motivated me. I told my nigga, yeah, we got to work hard because I'm trying to roll like that. That's what a real man to do. That's what a real boss to do. Respect. So we on a remorse, right? I told you I was listening to this, I was listening to this music and I'm like, bro, this is the energy, right? And it's crazy. You just confirmed this. We sitting outside, and you was like, "Man, everybody that's around me is my family. Niggas yeah. been around, yeah. right?" I'm gonna say this. Why don't you tell me what you think about it? He said, "It's hard to pay forty, pay Nico back. All the nice chubs is pulling up where well, I, I needed him at. Yeah. All the times Mark was making sure my, my luggage, luggage was packed. packed. Yeah. All the times he had to go, go and double back." He said, "I mean, even a salary, you can't put a price on that. It's no salary cap." It's no paying them niggas back. Yeah. That's when one of the hardest that, lines you ever said, yeah. You with your family. Yeah. You put your family in position. Yeah. You hear that like, because you even pay, I mean, because he here, what's your name? Matt. Matt. Yeah. 13 years. Yeah. Because you, cause you even put a price on the, the things he did to you, the conversations, the things he did with you, the conversations that he had with you. The times he was there for you when nobody else was. Yeah. How could you even repay that? I can't. Only way I can pay them back is just keep them with me through this journey. Mm. But I can't pay them none of them back. Lowdown, Blair, Mac, the, and they just the ones that's here right now. But none of them, they know that. That's why we current the way we current. Like I always told them, listen, when I first got into this, I don't know what y'all gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna figure it out. Just trust me. Mm. They trust me. Now they all got their own families. They their own bosses. They their own. They their own breadwinners of their own family. They got their own cribs. They got their own cars. They taking care of themselves. Mm. Talk to me. Yo, you cook. You went to school for cooking. I need a chef. You gonna be him? Why I go hire somebody I don't know and put money in their pocket? Oh, you you six five. You want you, you think about doing some security work, and you can drive. All right, yeah, you can be my security. You can drive for me. Oh, you smart. You know how to make decisions. You're a people person. You know how to talk to people. Oh, you can be my manager. Mm. Cause you gotta have people in this business that I mean, you gotta have people you can trust. You gotta have people you, you can trust. Cause there's gonna be so many people trying to pull you this way, pull you that way. They don't have the best interest in your heart. You feel what I'm saying? Like you gotta have people that 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 care about you. And you gotta have a team that understand. It's so hard when you're success, successful to have people to understand. That's why I try not to meet people along the way and pull them in because they ain't gonna understand fully. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I charge them so much because they understand what I'm on, what I'm trying to do and where I come from. So it's always going to hit different from them. They the type of people I want to want to have around me. Let's talk about coming up to that, right? Yeah. Before you was able to put niggas in position. Yeah. Let's say even before, let's just talk about Mac, right? Yeah. yeah. 13 years we talking about. You and your family, your sister got booked. Yeah. Y'all got put out at one time. Yeah. Y'all were sleeping in one bed. You like six four, <laughs> your brother like six one, yeah. your mom's like five ten. Yeah. Y'all got a baby, y'all see much your aunt in your aunt crib or something. Yeah. And those times, right? And you telling niggas, bro, just hold me down, just believe it. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. How was that anxiety? Did you have anxiety? How was it like just climbing that ladder and letting niggas know I got you? But you ain't there yet. Yeah. But you just trust me. It was never hard for me because I always believed in this shit. Mm. All I ever needed was a team to believe in this shit with me. That's why I always told them, like, 
It's never, it was never, you can ask my friends, I never doubted this shit, not one step. I knew I was going to be who I said I was going to be. Facts. I never doubted it, not once. My problem was getting these, getting other motherfuckers to believe I am who I say and I am. Keep, stay right there. So for niggas, even, we won't have a, just a candid conversation, right? Because yeah. even me, I feel like you can know yeah. But it's a difference when you got niggas that's doing work for you yeah. for free. Yeah. It's a difference when you got niggas that's, that's helping you and it's yeah. like, bro, I know where I'm going to be. Yeah. I just need y'all to believe. Yeah. I'm talking about those times when it's like, when that's, nobody yeah. really knows, yeah. you feel me? And it's like, bro, I just need y'all to, you're keeping your team by your yeah. side. But that's what I said. It, it's so hard to find people like that. They rare. So when you find them, you got to hold on to them, treat them right and keep them with you because it's a long journey. There's so many ups and downs to this shit. There's so many back and forth with this shit. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta have people you can lean on and trust, especially when them times get hard. Like, no, like, you got this shit, shorty. Stay in the gym. Mm. Instead of a motherfucker tell you, you know what, fuck it, fuck this shit, man. The coach don't fuck with you. Fuck this shit, yo. We ain't gotta do this, fuck it. No, you need motherfuckers to say, yo, shorty, you work too hard, let's keep going. Let's keep going. You think those are the people who helped you keep going when it was the hard times came? Because when them hard times came, you could have, bro, we from the city. Yeah. You could have eat, bro, you, bro, you living with your aunt. Yeah. Y'all sleeping in one bed. Yeah. You could have eased my, I need to get his money. Yeah. And I know niggas outside getting yeah. his money. Yeah. But that was never, that was never, that was never the plan for me. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, when you got a plan and you really believe in that shit, ain't nothing going to throw you off track. Like, mm. I was living in the hood and didn't even realize it. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just say this? I'm so mentally tough. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm so mentally tough and so focused on accomplishing what I had to accomplish. Man, I'm talking about it all the time. It started taking me to get grown to realize, damn, I was in a fucked up situation. I swear to God. Because when I was a kid, <laughs> I didn't never looked at it that way. Here will tell you, I lived on a spot in East Baltimore on Cliffmont. You walk in there, somebody live upstairs, me, my mother, and my brother live downstairs. It was blow up bed, blow up bed, and then you had a basement with a bed and a computer. That's all we had. But I never even looked at it like, damn, we ain't got shit. Because I was so focused on doing what I had to do, and I had good friends. My mother was always positive. It was just love. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And I never looked at it that way. I was so focused on what I was doing, it never felt like I was living in a fucked up place because I was so focused on where I'm about to go. Mm. I'm, I'm right here, but I'm living like I'm right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm working out, I'm hooping, I'm like, damn. You focus. All I gotta do is keep doing what I'm doing right now. I just keep doing this shit and I'm gonna be able to live how I want and how I'm living right now. I was thinking about that shit back then. That's what I'm saying, like nothing mattered to me. I never worked a job. I was looking at niggas that hoop with me and shit like that. They working jobs. I'm like, oh yeah, you ain't about to be fucked with me at a month or two. I'm putting in way more work than you. Why you working that low ass job at McDonald's? Because you want to be able to take a girl to the movies. Why you out getting your license? Cause you gonna drive somebody's car to look cool at 16, 17. I had none of that shit. I was in the gym working because I was always looking at fuck being a man at 18, fuck being cool at 17. I want to be cool when it matter. When I'm grown, when this shit really count. So, think I said, give a fuck about being you said the something. man in high school? That's, let's be fair though. You said something, and I and I wouldn't be me if I just let that ride, right? You got niggas who work a job, get that license because they want to be a man at seventeen. You got yeah. niggas like that. Yeah. But in our city, you also got niggas who doing it because that's the only thing they got. No, I respect that. So, I'm just telling you how driven I was. Yeah. I was cool with being broke. I was cool with not having no money in my pocket if I had a little chick and I couldn't take her to the movies. I was cool with asking Mac, yo, you got a dollar, five dollars, whatever, if we was trying to do something, with, whatever it was, I was cool with that. Because I knew it was going to pay off in the long run. I knew it. And you, but, but you also had a mom's that... Supported you and she worked her ass off. Yeah, she like, was a grinder. She, she worked her she ass off. She was a hustler. It's some niggas out there, and, I, and that's, I wanted to talk about this because I feel like worldwide, nationwide, so many niggas that could have. Yeah. And I, you hear people say, I don't want to be a shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Yeah. yeah. But we can't, you know, there's niggas out there that's, that's really nice and really good, yeah, and you can yeah, attest to yeah. some niggas that could Hell really be yeah. in the league. Hell yeah. But they went down the wrong path, they chose the wrong lane. Yeah. Do you ever have any, like, 
survivor's remorse. Like, do you ever look back like, damn, man, I wish this nigga could have really, you know what I'm saying, his situation was fucked up. I wish he could have really, or you don't really. I ain't going to say, like, that I wish. It, I, I, listen, I don't know if I'm going to say I wish he would have did that or did that because, I mean, if she's not in my family, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? This fuck is him. life. Yeah, I feel you. Not fuck them or, or, or I don't feel sorry, but it's just like, I, like, that's that's just weird, like, for me to be like, damn, I wish he, if I don't have no emotional ties to him, you know what I'm saying? So, as as African Americans, I feel like this is something real coming from where we come from, yeah. in inner cities, right? And I think it's, it's something that's, that a lot of us have, and if you don't, that's dope. Yeah. Like, that, that survivor's remorse when it's like, you feel guilty that you made it, and some people that, that was what you did. Yeah, no, I had that. Hell yeah, I would have that, but that's why it's important, that's why I tell you. Everybody that was around me, pretty much for the most part, is with me mm. and, and and enjoying this life with me. They might not be as rich as me, but they get into it. They being able to do what they want to do for their life and take care of the people that's important to them in their life. That's all that matters to me. Let me ask you this: I don't know if this is true. This is something. I, this is something that I personally heard. Right? I told you I wasn't like a big basketball fan yeah. or what. I didn't know too much. Is it true that when you was in high school, like when you was getting recruited? Like you niggas, they had to draft you and your brother if they wanted you. <laughs> what is that? Was that? Wasn't that a rumor? No, nah, that was true. People be saying, but it wasn't. Nah, I'm not what crazy. I'm right. People, people. Right. Be, that's what I'm saying. Shit like that, a motherfucker say that in the city. That's some hating ass shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that really. But it wasn't a rumor. I'm not. Cra- yeah, I'm not, I heard. I'm that not before, just pulling that out. But they say that now because I made it to the lead and my brother don't hoop no more. But anybody that know basketball know that he was nice in his own right. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Anybody that know basketball will tell you, nah. Well, bro, was that deal? It was people at one point that thought he was better than me. But now I'm in the league and they see he don't hoop, but he's still living this luxurious life and he might be having jewelry on and, and, and he got a nice car, he got a nice crib, and he having girls. They'll say some clown ass shit like that. But come bad thing, but what I'm though. saying is if you come from the city and you of age, you would know that that man was nice. That's what I'm trying to say. Who would say some dumb shit like that? Only a hater. But what I'm saying, I don't... When if I hear it... was it, true, I would say, yeah. I must know. When I true. hear it, I don't think hate. He I was think... his own man. That's what I'm trying to yeah, tell yeah, yeah. you. He was nice on his own. Anybody who knew basketball would tell you that. No, nah, I'm not I'm not taking that from with me. You know what I'm saying? When I hear I don't hear hate. I hear... Yeah, because you don't know the whole story. Right, I'm, I'm saying I hear the a, love. I'm, I'm like, damn, that's some dope shit. telling you... I was there. I know you don't know. That's what I'm trying to say. Only somebody that don't know or hate it would say some dumb shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yo, that man was nice. He been nice his whole life. He had D1 scholarships on his own. Like, don't ever say no shit like, oh, Will was on the team, so Tom had to be on the team. No, yo was nice. That had nothing to do with me. That boy was nice on his own. Mm. Had shit to do with me. Was going to be a Division One athlete whether I was here or not. That's what I'm saying. That's some hate and that shit to say. Mm. If you know the story, that's what I'm saying. I, if you know the real me, you're going to know. Oh, yeah, that's some hate and shit. You ask any of my homeboys, they'll tell you, that's some hate and that shit. Mm. You don't know, so you're looking at it like, oh, that's love. Yeah, if that was the case and I was carrying it like that, my brother wasn't that nice, and I'm like, yeah, I still want my brother on the team. Yeah, that's that, I, I would salute that, but Niggas know that he was nice, so I never had to carry like that. Mm. So we know that basketball sometimes can be politics. Yeah. Just hypothetically speaking, yeah. curious. Could that even happen, though? Like, if, if, if a nigga was that nice, could he demand some shit like that? Yeah, De- depending on to, to what level you get. But yeah, hell yeah. I've seen it happen. What do you mean? Well, who? I can't say no name like that. I'm going to be snitching. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. So so curious. All right, so since you can't say no names, just curious. I, I don't know, right? We um, we know who LeBron is, right? Right. Yeah. And it's always this rumor of like him playing with his son. Yeah. Even if his son ain't all that, right? Do you think he will go to the league just because of LeBron? Yeah, but LeBron's son is good though. Okay. To me, I think he's good. But it, let's say hypothetically, he said that it probably could happen because you know what? LeBron is on the Mount Rushmore as the greatest basketball player ever. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the better you are, the more pull you got at your sport at the highest level, yeah, you can pull some, you might get pull some shit off like that. Mm. Because the team might say, you know what? We want LeBron James. We know what comes with LeBron James. Not just the player, not just winning games, 
ticket sales. This is a business. I'm still in a business. You feel what I'm saying? The media attention he's going to bring to your franchise. All that generate what? Money. Money, yeah. If you generate money and you're a business, that's a, a can't what? A can't lose, basically, right? Nice. So you would take a, say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take your son as long as it come with LeBron. Hell yeah. Talk well, to I like me. LeBron, so I think he's nice. Talk to me about um, the politics a little bit. We know that some niggas that play the game, they last a little longer. Yeah. Uh, niggas that, that want to go against the grain, yeah. we dubbing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is how I feel about politics. Politics is real in sports, right? I'm not going to sit here and say it ain't real. It is real. But making that as an excuse is corny to me. Mm. So I, Making that excuse of why you didn't make it and why you didn't last is some bullshit. So talk some to, super bullshit. Talk to me about what but I feel like it's a real thing of like being... Because I was a nigga who didn't have the politics on his side and made it. Okay. So, so if you blaming politics on your whole career, why you didn't make it, that's some bullshit. So talk to me about, I feel like you in the league, you in the business. It is sometimes, it's sometimes where you got to bite your tongue. How do you separate biting your tongue from standing on something and being a real nigga? Because I think that could be a real thing. That's what I do. How do I ain't how, kissing how nobody with- ass. But you don't got to be a damn idiot either. Like, <laughs> my whole thing is I always tell somebody, right, just because I feel a way about something don't mean I always got to broadcast it. Mm. That kind of make you a clown. If you think every time I'm might on here, right, if this shit ain't about me, if it ain't about you, it ain't about somebody I love, somebody I with, I ain't got to speak on it publicly. The fuck I, it ain't my business. That's some girl shit, getting in somebody's business. You don't have to always speak on every situation for what? It ain't affecting you. It ain't affecting your family. It ain't affecting your money. So why I got to speak on it? So what about in a sense of it, it being for a bigger purpose? Hypothetically, let's say Colin Kaepernick. It was for a bigger All purpose. All I'm saying is whatever you speak on, be ready to come, whatever, come, whatever consequences come with that, be ready to stand on it. Mm. That's, that's what I'm saying. And that's anything in life. I ain't even talking about no sport. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, my whole thing is, I ain't kissing nobody ass. I never been anybody to tell you that I do things in my way. But I don't always have to speak on something. I ain't got to get on Twitter and say this. I ain't got to get on Instagram and say that. For what? It ain't got shit to do with me. Now, if it's a great cause, yeah. If, and, and, and I feel strongly about that. I did my research on that. That's how I really feel about that. I stand on it. But I'm not standing on something to be cool for the moment. Or just to say, hey, this some cool shit. Let's get on it. Because if you're only riding away for a moment, eventually what? You gonna Waves fuck. in. Fuck. <laughs> so if you want all the way in with that shit, and then the consequences come back around, and you weren't really willing to ride on that shit, now you, you played yourself. That's what I just told you about the going home situation. I've already accepted if I'm outside and somebody do something to me and it was on some pure hate, I've already accepted that. I told you that, right? Mm-hmm. I don't care. I've accepted it. You got to, in life, you got to be make a choice. I'm going to accept this or I'm not going to accept this. So if I, if, if, if I stand on something that's politic and I feel strong about that, no, that is good with it and bad with it. It's just like a nigga in the streets. I don't even consider a nigga a real street nigga if he say, yo, I'm selling drugs, I'm getting money, and then t- t- turn around and be mad if he go to jail. <laughs> Facts. Because that means you was only with it for the good. Mm. You weren't with it for the bad, you know that's coming too, right? Just mm. like in basketball, I'm working this hard. I know anything can happen. I know I can get traded. I'm in a business. I know I can get waived. I know I might get benched. If you really want something, you got to know everything that come with this shit and say, I'm willing to accept all of this shit. It's just like a relationship. A nigga with a girl. You knew what she was before that. You accepted her, right? Don't just be accepting her when that sex good. <laughs> because when that's over, if they say she a freak and you got to hear that when you go outside, you gotta accept that part too. Facts. Or vice versa, girl. If you, you like this nigga, he got this and that, and you cool with that. 
What if you got two, three kids by different girls? You got to accept that part, too. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? No, nah, facts. Question, I think, um, you know, I'm not going to, I got my personal opinion on things, and, like, I feel like when we get out of a, coming from a place we came from, we get out of a situation, like, we just want to keep it that way and live our life. But when you see getting into the politics, you see athletes getting into the politics of things, you think that's only for certain type of athletes to, to deal with. For example, like we see Kyrie. Oh, everything wants. is politics when you get to sports, when you, when, you, when you decide to get in this game. Everything is a side of politics to everything. That's why I said if you believe in something, you stand on but it, do you, that what's coming with that. Do you intentionally try to stay away from that part, though? Like, it's oh. like me being an athlete and saying I don't want to fucking sign autographs. You know that come with it. I'm not about to complain about signing autographs or taking pictures. I know that that comes with being an athlete, and I still chose to be it. Mm. Like, I try to make life simple as possible. Y'all know I decided to do this, so I'm knowing what's coming with it. The good and the bad. I'm not skipping the bad, though, because I know that's coming with it, too. Whatever you think is bad, or not just bad, or things you might not feel like doing. You, you don't think it's times I'm tired, I'm coming from a game or a workout, and I might be in public and I got to sign something or take a picture. Every time I don't feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it because I said what? This is the life I fucking chose. Mm. I'm taking everything that come with this shit. Nah, I feel you. I was, I was really asking like far as, you know, niggas that take stances, big stances, like Kyrie with the uh, vaccine. Yes, take it. I'm cool with that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Take it. But know what come with it. I'm not going to complain about what come with it after. No, nah, thanks. Because you know there's a chance of other people saying, that's dumb. Other people saying, you shouldn't have did that. A chance of these people might not fuck with you like that, like they used to. You got to accept that. That's what I'm saying. It's no complaining. if you believe in it, stand on it. Stand on what you... And, 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 and whatever come with it, come with it. Let me ask you this. When it come to, like, um, legacy, right... What would you say defines legacy? I feel like back back in the day, you know, you you had to stay on a team, get them this many ships. But nowadays, like niggas is trading to make make superstar teams to get these rings, yeah. right? Like, what what would you say define legacy? Is it staying on one team, bringing it to them, or the rings? Legacy you should is get what personally? you decided it would be. What is it for you? For me personally, or how I would look at it for somebody else? For you personally. For me personally, it's just, just getting to the lead, staying in the lead, being a star in the lead, getting buckets in the lead, being somebody that my peers respected in the lead, and just doing it at a high level for as long as I could and taking it as far as I could. It's still things, I'm 11 years in, it's still things I still want to accomplish that I haven't accomplished yet. But if my career ended today, my legacy would be complete within myself. Mm. So it's, 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 it's what, you, what you make it out to be. That was the things I wanted. Like, my whole thing was to get to the lead, do my thing in the lead, be in there for a long time, don't be one of them fly overnight type guys, and take care of my people. I did all of that. My legacy submitted. Mm. No, facts. Do you think, <clears throat> so when I think about legacy, right, I think about, you know, like, when LeBron left Cleveland, went to Man, Miami. Man, LeBron legacy is stamped. Niggas, At the end of the day, he's stamped. He did everything that you could do in the NBA mm. at a high level. He didn't want MVPs, finals MVPs, championships, all-stars, first team, all defenses, I mean, what else is there for him to do? So for sake of conversation, sure. for sake of for sake of conversation, we chopping up bullshit and for sake of conversation. Who who trade was worse? LeBron when he left Cav the Cavaliers to go to Miami or Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant shit was worse. Why you say that? Because he went and joined a team that eliminated him. Mm. That's how I feel. Uh, his opinion might be different. Somebody else's opinion might be different. I'm telling you, as a competitor, there's no way that somebody beat me and eliminate me and I go join him the next year. That's like, to me, I look at it, that's like some niggas beat me up and then I go join their crew. <laughs> 
What they say if you can't beat them, join them. That's what they say. I never said that. <laughs> I said, I said, shit, keep fighting them till you beat them. Eventually, you're going to win. And if not, if you keep losing, guess what? You can look yourself in the eye and say, shit, I kept fighting, though. But in a league, just curious, does that make you worth more? You, I mean, shit, he left, he got his ring, and... Yeah, I would, and that's what goes back to what I said. He got to figure out what his legacy is. I'm telling you my opinion. Mm. Kevin Durant might not give a fuck about none of that shit I just said. <laughs> none of that shit the media is saying about him. Like you said, he might say, guess what? I got my championship. That's what I wanted to do. And I won, and I won finals MVP, and ain't shit you can say. If that's how he feel, deep down that's how he feel, guess what? He accomplished it. It don't matter what I say or what you say. That's what I'm saying. It all comes down to what you believe and how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. But me, as a competitor, if I was Kevin Durant, if I was in that situation, I would have never joined them because they just <laughs> beat me. That's just how I feel. That's just what I stand on. Even if he wanted to leave, go somewhere else. But I ain't going to these guys that just beat me. No, oh, sir. <laughs> I got too much pride. That's what I'm saying. My pride is crazy. No, thanks. Question. If you had to put together like an all-star team, top like top twelve, who would be your starting five? And then who would be coming off the bench? And who would be the last two? Uh, all time? Yeah, all time. I had magic at the point. <sighs> On the wings, I'ma had to have Kobe and Mike. Feel me? Down low, damn. I'll probably have to have Tim Duncan at the four, Shaq at the five. Mm -hmm. So that's the starting that's five. That's starting five. Coming out the bench. How many players I get to come out the bench? It's five, right? I think it's five, and then you got an extra two. I'm saying I get two players to come out the bench? No, you got, it's 12. I think it's a so team of 12. So you give me just 12 total players? Yeah, yeah. So that's the starting five. So who going to back up the starting five? Damn, oh, you giving me too many players to, to play with. I had somebody like Isaiah Thomas, the old Isaiah Thomas that played with Detroit at the point. Then I had somebody like, uh, who I have at the two? I probably had AI at the two. Brown at the three, KD, yeah, KD at the four, stretch four, and then a came at the five at center. Mm -hmm. So that's 10. Sheesh. And then I'd probably throw in somebody like, tch. I had to throw in at the watch and stuff, just get a ring. I'd probably <laughs> throw in stuff. And I'd probably have to throw in somebody like, uh, oh man, I'm geeking. I, I'd probably have to throw in, um, Bird. I'm geeking. Larry Bird. I got to throw Bird in there. Yeah. I feel like that's not as easy as you say, though. It's a no, lot of niggas that you left players. out there. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> that's fire. Hell yeah. Who you think top five athletes you played against? Against yeah. in the league? Kobe won. See, that's tough. When you say top five, mm -hmm. you saying like hard as the guard or just top five players just period that I played against? Because if you're going by just Top five players that I just played against Kobe, Braun, Kevin Durant, Steph. Shit. That's four right there. Just playing against Tim Duncan. Like, I played, Tim Duncan was still in the league when I was in the league. So we got. They top five. They Hall of Fame. So you got Kobe. First ballot Hall of Fame. You got Kobe, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Tim Duncan. And, who, and Steph. And Steph. Yeah, they all first ballot Hall of Famers. Top five players you. Play with. That I played with. Yeah. Dame Lillard. Mm. Nikola Jokic. Mm. Um. Hmm. Oh man. Dame Lillard, Nikola Jokic, Lamarcus Aldridge. Damn, who gonna fill them last two spots? Hold up, hold up. Oh, man. Them three. Them three right there solidified. If you want to leave it at them three, you can. It's fine. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at them three. Because them three is, like, undeniable. Okay. The, like, the other guys, I, I played with some other great players, but it'd be hard for me to, like, decipher between them. Like, I, CJ McCollum, Jamal Murray, Mo Williams. 
fuck, uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Then you get into it with him? Yeah. What the fuck? I, that's just basketball shit, though. On a court? Yeah, it ain't personal, that's just... In the NBA? Yeah, I argue with my friends. I get into it with them. Nah. That ain't nothing serious, it's just in the heat of the moment. Everybody want to win. You can't take shit like that personal. Like, I'm saying, hold a grudge, he ain't hit me, I ain't hit him. Do you think the... Um, he ain't say nothing too disrespectful, I ain't say nothing too disrespectful. Do you think the, the NBA, like, soft now, like, compared to, like, back in the day? I don't know, man, I don't get into shit like that. <laughs> Is it too soft or nothing like that, like... Ain't nobody ever murdered nobody in the NBA, not in the 80s and not now. So what the fuck, what the, what the fuck you mean, too soft? Was there a couple more fights back then? Yeah, but at the same time, the motherfucking fines wasn't as high as they is now back then either. You gonna think twice about just whacking a motherfucker, you might lose a hundred grand. You get what I'm saying? Like, that money play a part in all that shit. I feel like and we was only getting fined $500, yeah, we be smacking the shit out of motherfuckers too. But I feel like, I ain't gonna lie, yo. The money's so crazy, it seemed like niggas don't even be giving a fuck. Niggas just be doing whatever, like, fuck it. Cause you can find for anything nowadays. I wouldn't say anything, just the, that's what I'm saying. Just the motherfucker gonna say fuck it, it just depends what the, fine, what the amount of money you gonna get fined for. Mm. Motherfuckers ain't just whacking and punching motherfuckers no more, cause you might get fined 500,000. Speaking Who of trying to lose that because I slapped somebody in a fucking basketball game? It's... He would have to do something real personal, right? Nah, fuck. They ain't going to be petty because yeah. he fouled me. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. It's crazy. Speaking about money, right? Coming from the city, right? Coming from nothing. When you first got your big check, like when you first seen yeah. uh, M, yeah. what was the first thing you did? The first thing I did... I know you had to have fun. Like, blow it I'd on just something. be so shocked. I was just like so shocked. It didn't want even about me buying nothing. It was just about like, damn. So he ain't blow it on, he ain't blow a bunch of money on something? Like something? I mean, what was I the didn't dumbest blew, purchase I didn't you made? money on a lot of shit. What was the dumbest purchase you made? I wouldn't say none of them was dumb because in the moment it felt good. <laughs> Wait, I'm so you saying, never looked you might, you might That's because you still getting like you, you might think something dumb. You might think these rings is dumb. You might think this watch is dumb. You might think this outfit dumb. I don't know. You might so you think one of my cars like, like, dumb. That was some dumb ass shit. Hell no. <laughs> Only thing I think about is, damn, I wish I could go do it again. I wish I could relive that moment again. I ain't gonna lie. Nothing I ever got. I was like, that was some dumb shit. I was like, damn, I wish I could do that shit. I wish I could relive that shit again. Let's talk about that good shit. I come here in Miami, crib is crazy. You're like, bro, this is the crib in Miami. Got one in Denver. But you bought your mom's a crib. Yeah. I feel like a lot of niggas say the trophy is the chain. Yeah. But niggas coming from where we come from, I feel like I could, I could say this confidently and say, that was like the trophy, like buying your mom's a crib uh, was the- Oh yeah, that ain't even close. All this shit I got wouldn't mean nothing if I wasn't, if I wasn't able to do that for her. Like, How was that when you was able to do it that? It was crazy. That, that was the best feeling I ever had. Mm -hmm. Besides, like yeah, besides my kids and shit like that. That was one, that's like, that's, that's right there. Like, cause she was with me from the jump. She believed in me from the jump when nobody else believed in me when I was, Saying I was going to be that, she was always telling me, yo, you special. Mm. Like, my mother used to, I ain't going to lie, she used to tell me that all the time. Like, you special. Like, and mean that shit. Like, you can tell when somebody's saying some shit just to say some shit. My mother used to tell me that all the time. I'm talking about when she would get on my ass, when she was mad at me, when she was happy, anything. If, like, she would just always tell me, well, you special. Even if I got into some shit, she'd be leaning on me. She always ended with, yo, you is special. You got to understand. She would always say that, yo, you got a calling. You special. She was saying that shit to me since I can remember, six, five years old. And she still tell me this shit to this day when we on the phone where I see it. Like, you got to understand. You special. I could fuck up right now and do some dumb shit. And she'd be pissed. At the end, she going to always end it with that, yo, you special. Man. You got to think, Will. But she always, my mother always told me I was special. Besides my belief in myself, in God, it was her all the time. Like, 
just believe me, like telling me, yo, you got a gift. She would always say that, yo, you chosen. That's what she used to say, yo, you chosen. Mm. I didn't even know what the fuck that meant. You the chosen when, one. When I was sure. young. But she would always say, yo, you chosen. I don't even know why she was saying that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, coming from Baltimore, like, how could she know? Like, I'm just a regular kid, just like anybody else. Not like we in this great environment. Like, how did she know that I really was chosen, I really was special? She started saying so much, I started believing that shit. I start really thinking like that, like, yeah, I'm special, I'm chosen. Not to get on my soapbox shit, right, but it's, this is real. I feel like, you know, it's a saying that, that go around and say, um, check on your strong friends. Yeah. You feel me? I feel like you are that strong friend. Yeah. You got so many niggas depending on you. Like you said, you put your mans on now, they bosses. Yeah. You got family. Yeah. You got girl. No, None of these people don't got to worry about shit. Yeah. Respectfully, and not take nothing away from them, but we can all say because you was able to put them in position, right? Yeah. Do you ever, is it ever a time where you sit there like, man, if I fuck up, so many people depend on me, and how do you handle that? Hell yeah. Anytime I ever fucked up, that's what I think about. Anytime I ever did some dumb shit, it's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You not only gonna fuck up yourself, you gonna fuck up all these people around you that you, that you helping build and, and help them take care of themselves, like, Definitely. That's, yeah, hell yeah. That's a lot of pressure, though. How do you deal with that pressure? That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, but that's the same. Go back to everything we've been talking about from the beginning. I go back to what I said. I already made these decisions. I've already accepted that shit. I've already accepted with being a boss and being a breadwinner. Yes, it come with a lot of attention. It come with this. It come with that. But then it comes with also you helping people. And if you mess up, it can fuck up everything they got going, too. Mm. So I'm aware of that, and I've already accepted. So it's just like, and I'm not perfect. I fucked up. I did things that could have, you feel what I'm saying, jeopardized me. I've been in situations where I might should have turned the fuck around, but it just worked out for me and everything. All right, but yeah, Wait. I already accepted that. So as as and, and being in that position, I'm you know, not saying I was accepting it, and it always make it easy. So I have my days where I'm emotional or I want to be by myself. I might go in the room for an hour or two or whatever and just think and just, mm. I might break down to myself though. They'll never know. You feel what I'm saying? But that's just how I deal with it. And that's what I was about to, I was just, exactly what I was about to go, bro. It's like you took the words on my mouth. Pause. Being in that position as a black man, being in control or responsible for so many others, when the last time you really broke down and you dropped a tear? A tear? Oh, man. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I cried before for sure, though. I, I, I don't know the exact time, last time I did cry, but I cried before. The last time you can't remember, what, what was it about? The last time I cried? Yeah. The last time I cried was because my cousin died, got killed. Mm. That's the last time I cried. And I think that was like last summer. But I told them that though, that's the crazy thing. Like, I remember it, it happened like two years ago, but last summer I just had a breakdown where though like, I just cried. And it was random because I was in the car. I was in the car with my girl, I wasn't even around none of my homeboys and it was, nothing was going on, it was a regular day in Miami. And I just broke down and started crying. Because I think when it first happened, I was so in shock. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I was sad, but I didn't release. But I never let it out because I was so in shock that I couldn't believe it, that I was just, like, numb. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, something happens so crazy sometimes, and you're going through it, but it's like, you ain't really reacting to it. And last summer, I just, yo, know, for like, I was straight, I just was bawling, crying, like, yeah. And I couldn't stop thinking about him. And I could not stop crying. Like, and I just was thinking about it. I just remember just being in the car and I just started randomly thinking about him. And I just started randomly crying. And I just could not stop. Like in those moments, who do you go for go to for like comfort? Or the... Myself first. And then I told them. I told all my dad tell you that. I went to them. I was like, yo, I miss Lou. I was telling you, like, I'm just crying right now. And I can't stop. Damn. That's dope. That's fire. I feel like how do you how do you get to that point? Because I feel like a lot of people 
black men especially, we hurt. We go through something and we feel like we can't go to somebody because yeah, it makes us like feel. something like that, they all feel that like pain. He wasn't just my cousin. He was all it is. Mm. We just a brotherhood. We got a crew, PTF. So it's like somebody in that go down, they all feel that shit. They all cried about that shit. They was just as close to him as I was. We, that's somebody we around every day. I'm talking about like even during the season. He going to cities, pulling up on me, checking on me, making sure I'm good. All of that. And he's doing the same thing with them. Like they hanging out with him just as much as me. So I know I can talk to them about it because they feel my pain. I mm-hmm. tell them some shit like that. One of them might start crying. Or they like, yo, I miss that nigga too. So it's comfortable. It's like a safe haven for me, for real, mm-hmm. when it comes to shit like that. But it is something that I don't talk to nobody about. But that's every human. What, what are those things? I just told you I don't talk to nobody about them. <laughs> I mean, it's a safe space, though. I feel like these are the times, like, and, and for this platform, I be trying to get like men to understand, like, yo, we are human, and we can we can have those vulnerable moments, and nothing embarrassing or something like that. But like, yeah. what, like, well, not even embarrassing, like nothing like ov- overly private. But uh-huh. what is something? One thing that you don't really talk to nobody about. If you could bless me on my platform and tell me what is something that you don't talk to nobody about that nobody would never know. I mean, just just personal stuff for me, like that's in my life, that's my thoughts. That's it, like. It could be anything at a moment. If it make me emotional, it make me get my feelings. That's just what it is. But I don't talk to nobody about them. Is it because you feel like they want to understand or? Yeah, is... I, 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 feel like, I feel like one, maybe somebody won't understand, but not just that. The biggest reason is just like, I'm going to tell you this and then what? Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Like. You can get up and chest. I gotta deal with this shit at the end of the day. That's just how I feel about it. Like I gotta deal with it. it don't nobody else gotta deal with it. So it's like, I'm telling you and then what? That ain't gonna help solve it. That ain't gonna help really make me feel that much better. Like I gotta deal with this shit. I'm the one who gotta live with this shit. You ever like thought about therapy at all? Yeah, but I don't know. I'd probably never do therapy. I do shit like do music. Feel what I'm saying? I do some shit like that first, or whatever I gotta do. I go to the court and shoot and work out. Whatever I gotta do to ease it. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Like I speak. Well, be this. around them. Like I might be going through some shit and they don't know, but being around them, I help ease the shit. I um, I speak on this all the time. I feel like my first time going to therapy. I ain't really understand it. I ain't gonna lie to you, but I never forget my therapist asked me about my mom's and like. And I was like, my mom, she did everything she could. Like, she was the best mom I could ask for. Right, like, yeah. she was my motivation because she showed me what I what I didn't want to go through, right. et cetera, et cetera. And, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, the therapist was like, how did that make you feel? Right. And I never I never really asked myself that because it was like, it don't matter. Like, you know what? It, yeah. it was that time, but she did what she could as right. a mom. And when she asked me how it made you feel, that was my first time ever, like, getting really emotional about my mom because... Right. I never wanted to blame her because I felt yeah. guilty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, because she did the best she could. Right. But when she asked me how that made you feel, I'm like, damn, that hurt. Right. I'm not gonna lie, because yeah. it was a lot of things that I wish I could, yeah. the support I wish I could have had, or whatever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I asked you about therapy because I feel like me personally, I do, I do kind of wish all African American men can yeah. experience that because it's so many feelings that we don't even touch. Like yeah. you said, I don't even talk to nobody about it. It's so many feelings we don't even touch because it's like I'm a man and I gotta deal with it. That's a fact. That's how, that's my mindset. That's a crazy. That's a crazy feeling though, right? If somebody asks you how to make you feel about it, and you start thinking like, "Damn, that hurt." That did make me feel away, right? That's a crazy feeling though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's a crazy feeling. That's why not to get on my soapbox. No, 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 no. I know because I I told you I'm more in tune with my emotions than I ever been. I'm more in touch with my inner self and how shit make me feel more than I ever been in my life. No matter what it is. So I'll know some shit made me feel away and I'll be like, damn, that shit, damn, I'm sick about that. Or that shit hurt my feelings for real. Do you think it's hard as black men especially to express that? Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. Hell yeah. Cause you don't never want to come off as too emotional. That ain't cool, right? You don't want to never come off as too soft. That's just how we train. It is. And it's crazy. Especially from bottom, well, that's just how it is. It's crazy because like just just being older and understanding it, right? You know, 
I look at it and like I, I applaud and I clap for the woman movement because I feel like they having a movement. Like and what? <laughs> yeah, having a movement. The woman. I feel like the woman. Yeah, woman. Women. What woman. movement they have? Like I feel like. It's at an all time like women can like they can express themselves. We're not supposed to say anything like they Man, can. Women been expressing themselves for years. They but, run the world. Right? Like, no, for sure. About? But but keep, when stay they there. Want to express stay, themselves. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Being an adult, right? Yeah. Understanding that is like well, I'm just understanding like nah, women and they okay, and I can't say nothing. Yeah. But also understanding the other side, like damn, like. It, it's crazy that I think it's crazy. Hear me out. It's crazy that what, I, what I'm about to say I think is crazy. Because it's like, I'm like, yo, they supposed to have that moment. And as a man, the first thing that kind of mind is like, I supposed to let them have that moment. Not saying nothing about it. But that comes with me overlooking my moment as a man. And I feel like it's so hard to be a man to express ourselves, to say what we care about, to say what we don't like. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Talk to me. Women been having a moment since time, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel me? Like, when, women, hey, hey, hey. Hey, like, hey. Devin, be quiet. That's, <laughs> hey, like that. Yeah, women, you know, I'm having my moment right listen, now. Listen, man, women run the world. I Not love sure. women. No, for so this sure. Ain't no, this ain't no diss to women. Not at all. But what I'm saying is women been, to me, women been, having a moment because they run the world. It's just them acknowledging and accepting their power. Mm. But they run the world if but they really think about it. And they've been, what I'm saying is they've been running it. But as a man, right? They've and this been is, running it. And this is why I say this is a hard, this is a touchy conversation. Do you ever look at it and be like, man, I want you to hear me oh, like I gotta hear you? Yeah, hell yeah. But that'll never happen. That's why I keep telling you, willing to accept shit. That's what I keep trying to tell you. Everybody just keep thinking certain shit gonna change. Certain shit been this way before time. And guess what? It's gonna stay that way. Y'all keep trying to change that shit. Mm. Women don't wanna hear no men problems. And that's a fact. And that's not even no not to them. Yeah, it's what not I'm trying to tell you is, I don't even give a fuck because that's what it is. We are there to provide and protect. But do you, they want to be heard. They going to be heard. But you ain't going to be heard with no woman. Yeah, I That's get so it. That's so rare nah, nah, that you it, be heard with a woman. It, it, and, 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 and not just heard and, and, and things change from that. No, that ain't happening, buddy. You're right. But do you think that's fair? <laughs> do, you think, do, do you think that's fair? What I keep trying to tell you is, is life, fuck if it's fair or not. Hell no, I don't think it's fair. But guess what? I ain't about to complain about it because that's, that's, what, that's what they want you to do. What they be saying on Twitter and shit. See, I don't tweet a lot and shit like that. But just notice the shit they say. Hey, They're like, God, you, the men you, you sit down here to protect us is... Uh, I'm just saying what, what, what the little shit they be saying. Little shit, like, uh, if you want to be a woman, just say that. Facts. But it, They say some shit like that too. But we too. can laugh. They telling you without telling you. They do, but we can laugh at it. But at the end of the day, I want to have... You talking about laugh? I ain't laughing at it. I'm telling you, that's the world we live in. It is. About you being emotional. It is. But do you think that's a, a lot of the reason why men are angry? A lot of the reason why men keep keep a hold of a lot of things in and explode what they do? Yeah. But but what I'm telling you, it's been like that since time. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's been like that since time. Yeah, yeah. I wish. You I, just think about this, right? Right. All right. A motherfucker might think this shit unfair, but I tell a motherfucker, this is life, right? A woman, a woman ain't, ain't, just, ain't just getting with no man, right? A woman ain't just getting with no man. And for the most part, I'm not saying it never happens, but it's rare. Mm -hmm. a woman ain't just getting with no man and helping him build and he come from nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? But men do that for women all the, all time. the fucking time. All the time. That, oh, and I'm not complaining. I'm telling you, I've accepted. That's just the way life is. No, you're right. You're right. And it ain't never going to change. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You might well accept this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've already accepted it. No, nah, you I get That's it. The game I, you playing. I accept it. But again, when I'm talking to men, I do want to have those conversations of like, how it make you feel? Like yeah, I said. Yeah, we're going to have to have that with men. But women ain't trying to hear that shit. 
It ain't for they women. Hit. That's so what this, I'm saying. This ain't, yeah, we we talk amongst men all yeah, the time. Yeah, this ain't for women. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. This is for men. I'm I'm asking yeah. honestly, and I say keep it real. Fuck all the. That's life. No, do you but ever, that is real. No, no, that no that's real. Life. No, that's real. But I'm saying, do you ever sometimes be like, man, this shit ain't fair? Really? I mean, of course you're gonna say that, but all you right. got. It, all right. it, it that's is all what I'm it asking. is, that's though. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Of course you're gonna be like, damn, this shit crazy for real, but. It is what it is at the same time, though. Facts. Like, I ain't gonna complain about it. Facts, facts. Let me ask you this. For the basketball players, this might not be for the, the masses or the, 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 um, the uh, people. The masses, like I said, for the basketball players. Top five athletes that you played against who didn't make it to the league. Who could really be in the league fucking niggas up. But they ain't make it to the league for whatever that situation was. Like never even played a game in the NBA. Hmm. Sheesh. Help me out, y'all. Should I? I should do both. Let's do both. Let's say top five that's not in the league. They could have played a game or they ain't had their fair shot, whatever the case may be. Like, then, then let's say top five that ain't played a game. Hey. Everybody got a fair shot. That's why I tell my folks, stop making that as an excuse. I ain't have a fair shot. What the hell does that even mean? I don't know. You tell me. No, I'm asking you. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm talking. Some niggas will when say you that. Talking to somebody, when you talking to somebody like, when you talking to somebody like me about something like that, it's almost offensive. Mm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like you, you see how you riled up I get when you say shit like that? Yeah. It's almost offensive. No, I like it because when you ask me that because other question, that shit was offensive. Because you're coming from a person, you're looking at a person who didn't have the politics on his side, that rolled the bench at first and still made it happen. All right, fuck it. Top five players who not in the league right now that you played against. I'm going to do three different categories. Man, I, be, I could name 50, mother. I don't know. Give me know. top five. Top five. That you played against? Or That's not in the league right now. They could have made it to the league or whatever, but they not in the league. And they could have even played in the league before, but they just not in the league right now. Yeah. I could be going all day. Not top five. Not the niggas that was like nice and retired or passed. The, not them, but like niggas that probably played, gained their eye cut, they got went to the G League or whatever. Like niggas like that. Top five. Man. I don't even know, yo. Top that's, five. That's a hard. That's a hard. Wait, because you saying just top five? That's tough. Five. The first five niggas that come to get in. For, mine. Man. Mike Beasley, Josh Selby, Joe Jackson. I played against so many different motherfuckers. That's what I'm trying Keep to tell on. you. Keep going, Mike Beasley, Josh Shelby, Joe I was, Jackson. I could be all day no, just give me shit. the last two. Fucking Mo Hatton. Mo Hatton. Uh. Oh man, not in the lead. Man. I don't know, man. That's tough. There's one more. I'm trying to think of another name. Fuck it, Roscoe Smith. Roscoe Douglas, right? Walbrook. Walbrook. Yeah. All right. See, I was gonna say that. I ain't know if it's gonna be so many Baltimore niggas. Top five niggas that came out of Baltimore. That didn't go to the league. Damn. Top five Am niggas. Am I er? Because it, it, it's tough to like. Top five like niggas you that got, came you got out of. With, with this basketball shit, it's, it's so many layers to this shit. Man, top you know, five sure. niggas that came Mookie out of. Mookie in my line though, Mookie. Like, I ain't he saying you not. Understand. It's so many layers and. And, man, answer the generations. question, man. Answer I'll, be the, dis, I'll be disrespecting the niggas. Man, tell this nigga answer the question. Top five niggas. That came out of Baltimore that didn't go to the league. And when you say didn't go to the league, let's justify this. When you say didn't go to the league, like never played a game ever in the NBA. That's yeah. what you mean, though, right? Y'all tell me. I mean, no. Nah. You talking about that never touched the never game touched the league. In the never NBA. touched the league. So I guess Josh Shelby wouldn't count. No, because he played in the league. He played in the league. Did a kill play in the league? He didn't, he didn't no. really. So, nah, so Josh Shelby don't count. You, and, you, and you named him before, so that's fine. 
Top five niggas that never played in a league that came out of Baltimore. Can you count Mo? Mookie, can you count? Because Mo might have had a little. Mo only played some league, so do he count? If he plays. Some he didn't play. Don't if he ain't playing the league, no. Nah. Some league don't count, right? No, uh, I'm going to go Mo Hatton. Mo Hatton. I'm going to go J.Y. 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 Um, J.Y. was what? Lake? I mean, City? Gerald Brown. Gerald. Rest in peace, Gerald. G Songs. We just talked about G Songs. Rest in peace, Gerald. Um, never touched it. Never touched, never touched the league. Top five came out of the city, never touched the league. So let's start over. You said, you said, um, Gerald Brown. Gerald Brown. J.Y. J.Y. Mo Hatton. Mo Hatton. That I played against. No, nah, no, nah, it don't have to be you played against. Just Baltimore, period. As you can remember. But I can just remember. Yeah. Uh, I threw my man crime stop in there. I threw the crime in there. Um, Sco played in the league. Sco played the game before. Yeah. Hell yeah. With the Lakers. He played, he played the game before. That's why I said I try to make sure. CJ played the game too before, didn't he? Yeah, so I can't count him. Yeah. Oh, never played the game. Well, I'm at four, right? Yeah. And name him over again so we can start over so we can. I said J.Y. J.Y. Gerald Brown. Gerald Brown. Mo Hatton. Mo Hatton. Akil. Akil. And, um. Mmm. Mmm. It's a nigga on the back of my mind that I'm just like, you gotta name this nigga, but. Oh, Antonio Barton. Antonio Barton. Yeah, that's my five. That's how I'm closing it up. <sighs> Damn, so no Omar? Who? He Omar, Omar Sean? Damn. He don't make the top five? I mean, oh, tough. He just don't make the five, oh, the five niggas I named. Damn. You got to realize think... these niggas, I said Mo Hatton? Yeah, it's hard. Like, that's 20 <laughs> points a game at St. John's in the Big East. Mm. Beating Duke. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Like... Like these guys, I'm naming. What's the tough. difference? So, question: What's the difference? What's the difference of like you know niggas that went to college and did that thing and like in the, even in the NBA, but yeah. niggas that was like hood legends? Like, what's the biggest difference you think? You just said it. That you went to college. Niggas and... did it in the hood, and niggas that did it in college. Cause I'm pretty sure you can attest to like you probably go to like y'all saying open gym and niggas be putting up buckets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. they probably ain't. Go to college. You don't think it's the school that they you want? Cause you say you say nigga. When I say a nigga ain't get his fair shot, right? You say you don't. You think that you take that offensive, and I and I respect that. Mm. But some niggas ain't make the right decisions. Like went to the right school. Some niggas ain't go to the. I you, mean, if you nice, it don't matter what school you go to. So what you like, think? If you really, if you, I'm saying, if you a pro. So what you think the I biggest? I could have went to any school in America. I was gonna be in the league. So what you think the biggest downfall of the, the niggas that's really nice but don't really. Make it. I, I don't, yo, sometimes the stars just don't align for that shit. Mm. Like, Damn. it's only a chosen few. Yeah. It's not that many. Who gave you, so you play, it was this big high school game. I think it was at Lake. Played against St. Francis. How many points this nigga had? Six? Yeah, six. This nigga yeah. had six points. Yeah. Who gave you the, the, who gave you the blues the most? I only had six. I might only had like eight, twelve. Who, who gave but you? But I had a boxing one on me. You don't know what basketball is. What's now that? Anybody know basketball? I'll tell you what that is. That means somebody following me the whole game and never leaving. That means like when they take the ball out, I got somebody right here in my face. Okay. As soon as I move. So, so who gave you? Who, who gave you the blues the most in high school? Like just in a high school game. In the city, nobody. Uh, nobody gave you the blues in the city? No, nah, hell no. Okay. No, so, I'm being honest, though, with you. Like, you can okay. no, go no, back and fine. look it up. Up late, we went undefeated. No, I won play the year. So, so who gave you the blues the ain't most in Nobody high giving me the blues. And then I say Tyree Evans gave me the blues the most in the high school game. Yeah, we played against American Christian. Yeah. So when you played St. Francis, ain't nobody like, one, no, it wasn't no, like, no star? No, they there? had a star, and he was, but me and him didn't play the same position. Okay, okay. So you get what I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah. okay. Nah, man, y'all appreciate the conversation. I feel like we spoke about a lot of things. Yeah.